Next to me is the Honda S2000, one of the most legendary sports cars ever made. It's funny, when you think of Honda, the word sports cars don't exactly come to mind. You think of a reliable daily driver. And while that might be true, I think you'll be surprised to find out that the first car Honda ever made was a two-door sports car convertible. All the way back in 1963, Honda made their first ever production car a two-door convertible, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was called the S500, and in S600 form, it revved to 9,500 RPM. Yes, that's right, 9,500 RPM in a 1963 Honda. And a year later, in 1964, they went on to compete in Formula One. So it's safe to say Honda knows a thing or two about racing. This is called the S2000, and it was originally built in Japan in 1999. It had a production run from 1999 to 2003, and that was dubbed the first generation AP1. Now they refreshed it in 2004, that's called the AP2 generation, because the American market was complaining it didn't have enough torque. So they put a new motor in it, but this AP1 is the generation that you want. You see, this S2000 has the motor you want. It's got a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that at the time had the highest horsepower per liter of any car in the world. In fact, it wasn't beaten until 2010 when Ferrari released the 458 Italia. It doesn't make a ton of horsepower at 240 horsepower on 153 pound feet of torque, but it revs to 9,000 RPM. That's right a 9,000 RPM red line, and it has VTEC. So what exactly is VTEC? Well, it stands for a Variable Valve Timing Lift Electronic Control. That sounds really complicated, but I'll break it down for you. As most of you know, a car uses a camshaft with lobes to open and close the intake and exhaust valves. The trouble is, at lower RPM, you need a different cadence of the intake and exhaust valves opening than you do at higher RPMs. In order to have lower emissions at low speed, they need to open at different times than they do at high revving high speed to produce maximum horsepower. So in order to effectively have two different cam profiles in one car, they use a program called VTEC, which is an electronic and mechanical solution that effectively changes the cam profile from lower to higher RPM. And you can actually both feel the difference and hear a change at 6,000 RPM when VTEC kicks in. This specific S2000 has had some tasteful upgrades by its owner. It's got a veil side front bumper and splitter. It's got carbon fiber wide body fenders that are perfectly blended into the bodywork. It's also got Wed Sport 17 inch wheels, AP racing brakes, KW V3 coilovers. This beautiful carbon fiber hardtop, yes, this is actually carbon fiber and unbelievably expensive apparently, and a massive rear wing and exhaust. The awesome part is if you're actually interested in this S2000, it's actually for sale by my friend right now. So I've got a link in the description below to the Auto Trader link, as well as his email address. Make sure to mention Vehicle Virgins so you can get the best price possible. The interior of the S2000 is very simple and driver focused. We've got upgraded Recaro bucket seats in the car and the manual transmission is actually off of the AP2 generation car and it's got a short sh throw shift kit so look how short those shifts are that is amazing but my favorite part about the car has to be the instrument cluster so to turn it on we'll go ahead put the keys in the ignition we've actually got an aftermarket engine start button on the side but check out how cool the tachometer looks. Now in 2022, everyone's going digital with their instrument clusters, but to have done this back in 1999 is so awesome. Check out when I give it some revs. That beautiful curved horizontal display that looks kind of similar to an Aventador SVJ. Now furthermore, there are no controls for the passenger whatsoever. If you take a look at the dash in this section, you literally have no buttons or controls, just this little air conditioning switch here. The climate controls are all right by the steering wheel, so you don't have to take your hand off the wheel to adjust things. You've even got a climate control setting that'll blow air from behind you. So if you're in a cold environment, but you've got the top down, the top drops in just six seconds, by the way, when it's the uh, removable soft top, 
you can actually blow some hot air on your neck so you stay warm. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, all of the audio controls are completely out of reach of the passenger, which I think is absolutely awesome. So what does the S2000 actually like to drive? Well, let's find out. This 
carbon fiber top is pretty damn cool. Now, this car is best enjoyed with the top down because it's a convertible, but for audio reasons, I decided to leave the top up. But obviously, this hard top is, of course, removable. And that's probably the most fun way to enjoy the S2000. It's also a Honda, so it's going to be reliable. This car only has 56,000 miles on it, which in Honda terms is basically like five 